free. Having the version number there just means that if you want to have another install later, side by side, you can do that. Gig. So I'm going to click install. So this step here. So the installation is now completed. I'm going to click next. In this screen, it's just showing me what it has actually installed. And there's a tick box here. I've got that selected, so when I click finish, it should actually start up JDeveloper for me, which is the IDE. So while that's starting up, I'm just going to show you the uh, install home the Oracle Home which has been installed. So if I go to UO1 App Oracle Product FMW1213 and then I'm going to list the directory. So you see there's JDeveloper, Coherence, EM, there's OSB, SOA, WebLogic Server and so on. I'm just going to select the default here for the role and click OK. Okay, so this is the JDeveloper IDE. So before I conclude this uh, presentation, I'll just show you how to actually start up the integrated WebLogic server instance. So that's your dev environment where you can deploy your SOA composites, OSB projects, and so on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on Run. Under Run, you can scroll down, you'll see there's a Start Server Instance. So I'm going to click on Start Server Instance option. And this is going to start my integrated WebLogic Server Instance. One of the things you may notice is that if you're if you're running through these steps, you'll get a prompt coming up before the start, which is asking you to set a, a port and the username and password for the WebLogic user. So this is something that you'll have to do the first time around. And it may actually take a little bit longer then to actually bring up the instance because it's creating your WebLogic domain and all that um, under the covers. So that prompt didn't actually come for JDeveloper, which is actually... Um, quite useful, it's been kept for me so it knows what my preference is for that uh, WebLogic server instance but of course I could um, change those details if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to show you another cool menu which is um, this application servers so you can get to that by going to um, window I believe and then clicking application servers or control shift G so under there it shows any application servers you have. So you can you may have an integrated WebLogic server, which is this instance here. So it's kind of the lightest weight you can get. So it's a JVM that's actually running within the IDE. Um, and that's got you know a Java DB um, Derby. So it's very, very light. Um, in some cases you may want to have a, a standalone or compact domain which sits outside of JDeveloper so that you can kind of control it um, independently um, because obviously the integrated WebLogic server instance can only ever run when JDev's running. So if I try to close out of JDev now, it'll prompt me and say that it's going to shut down my integrated WebLogic server instance. Seven, 
zero or seven one zero one, I think, and then console. But that of course hasn't started up yet, so I'm just going to wait a little bit longer for the instance to complete, and then I'm going to click on launch administrative console. So it looks like it's getting close. You can see there's the service bus <coughs> debugger. So by default, you've got the debuggers running. Um, as I mentioned before, you can create applications and then debug them. So what that means is when you deploy them to your environment, it's for just to understand what's actually happening at runtime. So this log here, if you ever lose it for whatever reason, so if I close that, you can you can go to window and then click on log or control shift L to bring that back up. So aside from the application server panel here, you've also of course got application this is really where you create your actual projects which you which are your source code which you version control and which you build test and then ultimately deploy into your de your environments which may be development but then may be more controlled environments like a test or a user acceptance or eventually a production environment so it's creating the integrated web logic server for the first time it would have prompted you to enter a password and um, and that's what it did for me and this is going to give you the web logic admin console so this is where you make any changes related to the web logic administration server the other useful console is the em console so what you can do is go to the same link essentially but you would type em and then that would take you to the Enterprise Manager console, which doesn't appear to be deployed at this point in time, but that's something which you can get to um, if you want to see your Solar Suite deployments and and so on. So I've shared some different batches. Okay, okay. what is SOA architecture? Okay, need of SOA. So we discuss about all these things. These things. Okay, and uh, after that I discussed about XML, XSD, Visual, in detail, we had detailed discussion on all these things, target namespace, okay, we had discussed about this as well, SCA, SOAP, UDDI, and what are the different components in Oracle Source Suite, if you remember. Okay, and after that I started with the installation, okay. Uh, if you have any doubt among all these topics. So they may be knowing that we will have two servers generally. One is admin server and one is manage server. Admin server is basically used to uh, manage your managed servers and also to to monitor your resources. So a server, these are nothing but your managed servers. So if you remember I told, okay, your applications are always deployed in managed server. Uh, let me show you from the very scratch. Uh, Sumit, one question here. Mm -hmm. 